I didn't like the look of him before, and I still don't. He might be John's uncle, but I don't see why I should provide accommodation for him. Oh, I wouldn't mind in the least. He's a complete stranger. We don't know a thing about him. It um, wouldn't have anything to do with him being Barrow's brother. Huh? Uh, just a moment. It's a little embarrassing, but Angela didn't check to see if it would be convenient before she asked you to stay. Thought it was okay. Yes, well, there are problems, you see. Hey, look, uh, no worries. If you're frightened, I'll say anything about you and Dave. You needn't be. Promise I won't breathe a word. Oh. Uh, which room did Angie say? Second on the right up the stairs. Yeah. Oh, nice place you got in. Good. Start away. Would you care for a drink? Oh, thanks. Beer? No, small water, actually, thanks. I've uh, never stayed in a place this big before. Perhaps you'd like to add your own water. Ta. Good of you letting me stay here. <laughs> Thought it was your old bomb. What are you doing here? Get a load of you, Mr. Executive, eh? My new job. What are you doing here? No, I felt like a drive. Thought it was about time I met Angela. Been to see you, of course. <laughs> right. How are things in Melbourne? Thought you weren't coming home. I have to get changed. Well, why don't you do it now? You'll feel much more comfortable. Good idea. Won't be long. Yeah, take your time. Great to see you. Great to be here. Hello, Mum. On your way home from school? Yep. Having a clean up. You know what papers are like. I used to get threepence a bundle for these at the fish shop. <laughs> Played for a lot of comics when I was a kid. Sorry about last night. Funny how you always call in when your dad's not here. He's the one you should be apologizing to. Would you tell him I came to apologize? I thought you'd have more sense. Put him all that money on a horse. Well, Rob's already had a piece of my mind. I don't take it out on him. He didn't know I was going to place a bet. Well, not as much as I did. It's OK. You are going to pay for that sewing machine when you can, aren't you? It could take a while. Might be better if you took it back. Well, that'll be a bit hard. He's in Sydney. Sydney? Well, you know what he's like. I've already phoned Lynn, told her that he said you could keep the machine and that you can play the drums whenever you want to. <laughs> oh, what? It's not bad about him. I suppose I should expect it, though. He's your brother. You're not going to get around me with compliments. You can drop those off at the appeal bin on the way home. <laughs> should have seen the look on Beryl's face. I mean, nothing was going on at that stage. <laughs> All I was doing was banging away on the drums. <laughs> Uh, would have come as a bit of a shock, though. Well, she never caught me in the bedroom with a barmaid. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I decided to come up. I don't know what your mum's going on about, though. She reckon Angela was feeling pretty low. She's great. I'm glad you like her. Don't know where mum got that idea. Mm. <whistles> hey, hey. Don't get too carried away. We'd better make a move. Daddy will be here soon. What's so important about that? Just move. We're all going now, Mother. Righto. Have a good time. No question where Angela got her good looks. Well, I know John and Prue are off to a party, but where are you two going? Oh, just dinner. Mm. After that, who knows? Here tell there's some pretty good discos up here. <laughs> good luck with tonight. Daddy will be fine, I know. Don't be nervous. We'll leave you to it. It'll be okay. Is, is it more than three? Drive carefully. Better to be late than have an accident. Well, you don't know matron. <laughs> Hello?
Hello, Lynn Palmer. It's me, love. I wondered if you'd like to come over, seeing as Kevin and Susan are both working. I wouldn't mind the company. David's on a job. Oh, no. I think I'll have an early night, thanks. I've been sewing for hours and I'm really tired. I didn't think having a baby would take it out of you so much. I suppose you remember. Yes, I remember. Oh, well, you put yourself to bed. Night. Night. Any more requests? I'm sitting here by the phone waiting for your call. Next track, the lady from Greensburg. You're in a sentimental mood tonight, aren't you? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Sorry if I frightened you. I knocked on the front door and it opened. I thought I heard a voice. <laughs> must have been the radio. Oh, you must be Lynn. Oh, who are you? What do you want? Uh, I came to see Susan. She's at work. She won't be home till morning. Well, my husband will be home in a minute, though. Don't worry. I'll call back tomorrow. I really am sorry if I scared you. And a delightful end to the evening. Gordon, please sit down again, just for a minute. There are some things you must let me say. I know you think I've done some terrible things, but there were reasons and I'd like you to hear them. If you feel you must. No but I'd like to. You've no idea how much you hurt me when you reacted the way you did to Angela and John. I could have understood it if we'd had a blazing row. But as to cut me off like that. I was very lonely. And I admit, I never really got over David, even though I hated him when we were young. When he appeared, and at a time when I had no one to turn to, I needed him. That's all. But that's over now. I just wanted to let you know how I feel because I don't want us to finish with you feeling so badly about it. I can see you had your reasons, and obviously you felt justified in acting the way you did. It's been a very pleasant evening, but now I really must go. Thank you. Do you really have to go? Good night. I'll phone you before I go to Mumbai tomorrow. These two strangers could win half a million dollars if they can just make... I have some news for you, my darling. I don't think you'll like it. What? Glenn had a party last night. It was a festival of gossip. <sighs> About Gordon and me. Not Gordon and you. Gordon and Barbara Armstrong. She's up at Wombai. 
The story is they've been seeing quite a bit of each other for quite some time. Barbara Armstrong? But she, she's so... She's a widow, darling. But I don't think she's anything to worry about. All you have to do is get yourself invited to Mumbai for a day or two. You'll soon handle her. After last night, I have no intention of kowtowing or pushing myself any further. I went far enough as it was. Quite frankly, I'm sick of being rejected by men. You can pour me one of those. Are you doing anything today? No, why? I'd just rather not be on my own, that's all. It's ludicrous the way a dull little housewife like Beryl Palmer can keep a man, and I can't. Just be more careful next time. I said I'm sorry. I'm too tired to argue about it. I'm sure I closed the door properly. Anyway, who was he? Oh, I don't know. He said he'd be back this morning. Too bad for him. I'm going to get some sleep first. If he does, find out who he is. Look, anything could have happened to her. Well, it didn't, so calm down. I'll get it. Susan. I'm sorry, I don't know you. Bill said to come and see you. I was his cellmate. I got out yesterday. Sorry. Noel Devlin. Come in. For you. From Bill and me. Thank you. Oh, this is my brother Kevin and his wife Lynn. Uh, well, we met last night. I'm sorry I gave you such a scare, but I was sure I heard someone say come in. People shouldn't just walk into other people's houses. Uh, no. I'm sorry. It's a bit hard when you've been inside. You forget what it's like. I really am sorry. Yeah, like I... I better get going, just get my work things. You're working again? Yeah, dirty cars, wait for no man. Do you like a cup of tea? Love one, thanks. I feel terrible. I should have thought to bring you a bunch too. There's no need. Ready? Yep, nice to meet you. I think I'll walk part of the way with you. I'll see your mum for a while. Oh, OK. See you, Susie. Bye. Sit down. Thanks. How's Bill? Well, it's taking time, but he's making the best of it. I did what I could to help him. I've got so many questions I want to ask you. Well, fire away. That's what I'm here for. He turned up last night and scared the wits out of me. And he's come back this morning to see Susan. Says he's a friend of Bill's. Did he uh, say what he was in for? No, but he gives me the creeps. Uh, Susan seems really pleased he's come. Hmm, I can imagine. Well, someone she can talk to about Bill. I don't like the idea of her being by herself with him, though. No. Well, I hope he doesn't stick around. What, uh, what did he do to scare you? Well, the door had been left open, and he just appeared. I know I'm being silly, but I just can't help it. Bill really does love you, Susan. That's why he doesn't want to have anything more to do with you, or the family. I know. He really wants you to find someone else and get married again, you know? I agreed to the divorce because I knew it was what he wanted. But I'll still be waiting for him when he comes out. And I'll keep writing to him. You're a pretty terrific girl, Anna, the way you've stood by him. I mean, you keep writing even though he won't answer. He is reading them now, though. Oh, yeah. He really looks forward to them. I don't blame him, either. The sort of things you'd say help keep anyone going. Have you read them? Uh, I used to take them when he was asleep. They were personal. Oh, I know it was an odd thing to do, but don't get mad. You don't know how much they meant to me. You see, I hadn't had any contact with the outside for so long. And once, only once, Bill let me read a bit. Nothing personal, but it gave me, I don't know, another family. You don't know how much that did for me. I only wanted to thank you for helping me. I'm sorry if I did the wrong thing. No, I'm sorry for being angry. I'm really glad you came to see me.
It will only take a split second to get hooked on the new series of All Saints, Tuesday on 7. Hey, Colgate 360, why do you have a cheek and tongue cleaner? Because 80% of bacteria are not on teeth, so I clean teeth, gums... Good morning. Have a good time? Hmm, yeah, great. Dinner sort of got a bit out of hand, and then we went to a disco. All night? Oh, Angela told me how terrific the Blue Mountains were first thing in the morning. <laughs> You've been to the Blue Mountains? <laughs> mm, for breakfast. It was great fun. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Hamilton. She's perfectly safe with me. Why, well, I should hope so. You are her uncle, after all. Oh, only by marriage. Well, I know, and I've had enough. <laughs> I'm going for a good sleep. Good morning. Oh, and thanks. It was nice to be mad. I told you, it's my car. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. What about his car? Oh, a private joke, Mother. Oh, he's a lot of fun to be with. It's not a put on either. He's so genuine, like Beryl. <laughs> Looks like another coffee. Oh, thanks. I'd love one. Oh, here. I'll pour myself another one. <coughs> oh, how did last night go? We had a very pleasant dinner. That all? That's all. He's going to ring me before he goes back to Mumbai. We were all being a little naive to expect any more, darling. I, for one, didn't think it would turn out any other way. Oh, come on. You know darn well how you feel. Well, at least he's going to ring. Don't give up hope, please. Well, I need a good day's sleep. And don't give up. So genuine like Beryl. She can be as genuine as she likes. She's going to be a genuine grandmother before long. Hi. Just in time. I've just made a fresh pot of tea, that's all. Susan around? Hmm. She was exhausted after working all night and chatting with me. She's having a good sleep. Oh. Nice girl. And she's been kind enough to ask me to stay until I find a place of my own. Darling, I'm getting a bit bored with your determination to become Lady Misery. The Paris collection trip would do you the world of good. It would also give me a shoulder to cry on when I needed it. You've never cried in your life. Oh, God, who now? If it's attractive, bring it in. Morning. I thought I'd drop in personally and thank you for last night. I hope the perfume's still your favourite. Thank you. Yes, it was a nice night. We must do it again sometime. It'd be lovely to have dinner up at Mumbai again on the night of the opening. Not a bad idea, but I don't think so. It's just that I spent so much time up there in the beginning, planning everything. It'd be so nice to see it all come to fruition. Patricia, I'm really not sure. And with Wayne up there, it'd be marvellous for us all to spend at least one day together. We've all worked so hard for it. Yes, it'd be nice. Just one day? No. Come up this afternoon and stay for the week until the opening. Are you sure? Of course. You'll have to give me time to pack. I'll call back in half an hour. I'll be ready. Thank you. Bravo. Excellent performance. But I can't quite see the point. I thought you decided it wasn't worth pursuing. I had. But you didn't see his face, Charlie. I've got him whether he likes it or not. And it'd be a pity to waste all that effort. What about Barbara Armstrong? Hey, what about her? Love is very strange. It can come and go. Tonight at 8.30, the Desperate Housewives are on the loose. And after last week's wedding, will we discover whose body it is in the morgue? There's dirty dealings tonight on Desperate Housewives, followed by Seven's hit new series, Brothers and Sisters, at 9.30. Next on Seven, Eight Simple Rules.
Bye.